when you find works of art by a particular artist that move you deeply, suddenly you realize that that artist is part of you. And that's what happened with me, with Degas. Somebody once said that you can learn how to paint in a day, it takes you 25 years to learn how to draw. And so everything comes out of drawing, not painting with Degas. And so my exhibition here that's based on his drawings and his etchings, which are a form of drawing, are very much into the wheelhouse of what he's about as an artist. There are his prints, there is drawings, there is one sculpture, there are monotypes, there are photographs. Along with works by Degas, there are also works by his contemporaries and friends that were friends of Degas, that Degas had wonderful interaction with, like Mary Cassatt and Toulouse-Lautrec and Paul Cezanne. Most people, when they hear the name Degas, they say, oh, he's the ballerina artist, or oh, yes, he does horse races. In many cases, people thought of him as a realist rather than an impressionist. I think that you can still put that title on him because his sense of realism captured the moment in the interaction between uh, two individuals, for instance, about a private life behind closed doors, so to speak. You see this also in his photographs, these beautiful, intimate photographs, and you see him uh, with his friends, such as his younger brother, René, and uh, the great composers Claude Debussy and uh, Ernest Chasson. Degas had a wide circle of friends, not just in the arts, but also in writers and in musicians and composers of the day. Robert Flynn Johnson has been collecting these lesser-known Degas works since 1973. And he says in that time, he's developed a deeper appreciation for Degas' evolution as an artist. In the early drawings, they're very precise, but in the late works of art, such as the beautiful monotype of the man and the woman, it's like a finger painting by a genius. It's very loose and it's very rough and it's very confident. It's almost a sense where an artist starts off with the kind of meticulousness of Bach and ends up with the looseness and spontaneity of Theonis Monk. Degas was obviously out at a racetrack. He did one drawing, two drawings, three sketches on one side of the sheet. He turned the piece of paper over and did two more sketches on the back side. He didn't do them to put in a frame and to sell. He did them because he was trying to understand a certain aspect of that horse's anatomy that he would utilize when it came time to do one of his more finished racehorse pictures. They were a necessary form of Degas' creativity. There's 21 drawings by Degas in the exhibition. Not one of those drawings ever was on the art market before his death. They all stayed in his studio till the end of his life. He was a prolific printmaker, but most printmakers make prints to sell to the public in multiple editions. He didn't. He did prints and he put them back in his portfolio. With more than 100 works in his collection, Johnson doesn't hesitate when asked why he bought that first one 40 years ago. He says there was something about the tiny work that moved him in a big way. When I bought that first small monotype of Two Little Trees in 1973, I had no idea that it would grow into a collection like this. I'm a custodian. I am lucky enough to be able to have these works of art as part of my life, hanging in my home when they're not in an exhibition like this. His works had a psychological intensity that really interested me.